Hello everybody, my name is Dratnos, and welcome to This Week in Mythic Plus. This week's affixes are tyrannical, bursting, explosive, prideful, uh, of course, I guess prideful is every week. So um, this week is actually the third week in a row where we've had a pretty big set of changes coming in from Blizzard. This week's I think is the smallest set of dungeon changes of any of the last three weeks, but it can't be overstated how big the tyrannical nerf is, and that, of course, even though that came in last week, this is the first tyrannical week since then. So for those who don't know, the change has been uh, tyrannical has been reduced to 30% additional health instead of 40% for uh, for boss enemies. And that's it's supposed to be just the bosses themselves, although there are a couple of non... Like, it's supposed to be just the main boss itself, um, but there are a couple of spots, like in the other side, the last boss, the images on the platforms where adds are also scaling with Tyrannical, this expansion. They, they said at some point that that wasn't what they were going for and they were trying to just standardize it, uh, but it seems like there are actually a few things that are still scaling with Tyrannical. So that getting brought down to 30%, it's a pretty big nerf, right? It's it's uh, effectively a 25% nerf to the magnitude of Tyrannical, right? Going from 40 to 30%, uh, which is a pretty big deal. That saves a lot of time over the course of a dungeon, right? That's a, a, a big slice of health taken off of every boss. Uh, that will, I think, help bring Tyrannical closer to Fortified in terms of time for pushing keys. For the average group, uh, I think that this season, even for even for like a weekly 15, you could really start to feel those Tyrannical bosses, especially because there's the kind of this added discrepancy of your prideful buff, right? The, the longer the boss goes on, the higher a percentage of the time you have without prideful in addition to whatever your other cooldowns are. And so you could increase a boss's health like Tyrannical did by 40%, but it could almost double a fight's length because so much extra time was added outside of your cooldowns where your DPS was so much lower. So I think that uh, this is a change that you're going to feel in a lot of different key levels, and I think it's a good one. I'm not convinced that it's even enough to bring Tyrannical into like competitiveness with the uh, with the other ones, like with, with Fortified, I guess, the other one on that row. But I think that it is in the right direction, and it might actually be enough or close to enough. One other problem that Tyrannical Weeks have is that, with a couple of exceptions, the other affixes on the Tyrannical Weeks tend to be a little bit tougher than the Fortified Weeks. Uh, so if you look, for instance, there's a lot of ones where uh, if you see the affix Bullstring only shows up next to Tyrannical. Uh, there's some other rough Tyrannical Weeks as well that we have, <laughs> Inspiring Necrotic Tyrannical, uh, Bullstring Necrotic Tyrannical, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of rough stuff out there. This week is not so much one of those, though. This week, Bursting Explosive Tyrannical. I mean, Bursting is a tough one for your healer. Explosive is really pretty tame, uh, this expansion, because uh, everything one-shots Explosive Orbs. Uh, it does mean your group needs to be aware of it, and you need to particularly, if stuff's coming away, coming in from far away or teleports away from you or whatever, uh, anytime there's a, a far away uh, vector from which the explosives can spawn, it's important to keep track of that and have somebody looking at that, but as long as you're doing that, that pretty much is not an affix that's going to wipe you anymore. And bursting, you know, it can be dispelled now, which makes it a lot less lethal. Um, it does, it, it can tick pretty hard, particularly if, like, your healer is the least geared player in your group. This week, you're really going to feel that. Uh, but I still think this is actually a, a pretty good candidate for, if not one of the best weeks, it's definitely one of the best tyrannical weeks, and uh, I'm really excited to see how the tyrannical nerf ends up affecting you know whether this will be potentially considered a push week um, that's something of an open question in addition to the tyrannical nerfs there have been some nerfs that have happened to specific dungeons also mostly aimed at bosses we'll talk about each of those as we get to that specific dungeon in the dungeon by dungeon section which is going to start right now conveniently with the other side which is what we're looking at right now uh, so for those who don't know what we're looking at here this is mythic dungeon tools uh, my routes are available on Raider.io every week, the weekly route series over there. Uh, I'll have a link in the description below where you can go and grab those. For each dungeon, I have a route with and without skips. <laughs> Except here I have <laughs> two with skips. I guess I, this is the one where I copied. Anyways, um, you can go and <laughs> you can go and get this from Raider.io and uh, hit the little copy button, then hit the import button, paste it on in here, and get this route for yourself if you're interested. I always advise people to look through, and if there's anything that looks weird to you, anything that looks like it's going to be wrong, or anything that uh, for your group you think you've got something that would be better, definitely make the changes. It's supposed to be like a, a baseline or something for people who really don't want to uh, 
to put in any, the, you know, thinking about what they need to do in the route. Uh, supposed to have pretty good prideful timings, but basically every single dungeon, there's a lot of different ways that you can make it better, either for specific compositions or just because, you know, I, I, there's like something complicated that I don't want to, I, I don't want to try and put in here because I don't want to make it confusing for those people who want to just fire it in and forget about it. But that does mean if you're somebody who is willing to actually take a look and you'd rather have those slightly better pulls, you'd rather do something like skip these two guys, which is, you know, profitable, but it's not, I, I don't think that that's a good ratio of like easy to understand for how much of it benefit you're getting out of it, right? It's not one of those skips that I think is, is big value. And particularly, obviously, it's never going to be in the no skips route. Anyways, a little bit of rambling about the, the route philosophy. TLDR, uh, grab them if you want, use them out of the tin if you want, that's what they're designed for, but certainly, especially if you're pushing higher keys, or even if you're just interested in getting into route making, use them as a default, make some changes. Right, so, the other side. This is actually the dungeon that received the most changes on the uh, on the tuning that's coming up, or that is, has started this week. So the first thing is that uh, the timer has been increased to 43 minutes from 41 minutes, uh, this is, I think, a welcome change. It's the second time we've seen two minutes added to the other side at the start of the expansion. This dungeon actually had a 39-minute timer. And I think that this is pretty warranted because this dungeon, it's long, uh, and it has a lot of running around, right? You, you clear the three wings, and no matter what, you're going to have to then run back through the space you've already cleared. Back on beta, there used to be a, a teleport to the ring again. I took that away, though, so... Uh, I think the timer may have still kind of been factoring in that and not the extra couple minutes that you're running every single time you do this dungeon. So makes sense to see the, the timer increase to 43 minutes. I remember a while ago, um, <laughs> they were talking about how they, they didn't want to have any more 42 minute dungeons after like Arcway and, and Halls of Valor or whatever in Legion. So this cleverly sidesteps that 42 minute mark uh, here. <laughs> um, anyways, that's, that's definitely a change that will help the other side be a little bit less harsh. I think this is definitely uh, warranted. I, I was advocating for this. Uh, also, Hakar. This was one of the hardest tyrannical bosses in the entire world of Warcraft. Um, and the difficulty still does somewhat exist. The Sons of Hakar are going to do a lot less murdering of your clothies. And the Blood Nova is going to also be a, little, a lot less pressure, which means it's going to be less punishing for the fight to go super long as well, because your healer is going to have to expend less resources. People are going to get killed a little bit less. The tyrannical nerf is the big news for why Hakar is going to be a little easier as well, because Hakar is a fight where the longer it goes on, the more times it's going to get a shield up, the more those shields are going to be bigger as they are towards the end of the fight, and there's more sons of Hakar for them to hit, and that, that increases the size of that shield. Um, and so the 10% reduction in health of all bosses is extremely relevant for Hakar in particular, uh, especially on Tyrannical Week. So, I mean, well, yeah, it only affects on Tyrannical Week, but... That'll definitely make this boss, it's going to feel a lot easier than it did last Tyrannical Week in combination with that. Uh, and Dealer's Ix had the Arcane Lightning damage reduction. Basically the way that, that Arcane Lightning works is that as you get to a really high key, Arcane Lightning by itself is really, really threatening. And even in the medium level keys before this change, it was basically if it combined with another source of damage and you didn't have a defensive used, that person was going to die. This should make that a little bit less the case. You, you're still going to get punished if you don't if you just stack it back and forth between two people. That's the way it works. It bounces between the closest people. Uh, you're still going to get punished if you don't end up moving it between at least three people. But uh, it's not going to necessarily one-two combo kill people at such low key levels as it was doing before. So I think these are some great changes for the other side. Again, maybe there's some more that needs to happen in this dungeon, but. Uh, I'm encouraged by the fact that every week now for the last three weeks, there's been a great set of dungeon changes. Uh, and so if they just keep doing that for another 30 or 40 weeks, uh, we'll have all perfectly balanced dungeons. That'd be pretty cool. Just in time for the next patch to come along and uh, mess everything up again. Okay, so other than that, the other side, not too much going on here with these affixes. Nothing that's really, uh, there's no, no real bursting nightmares, no real explosive mentionings. And of course, Tyrannical talked a lot about the impact of that with those boss nerfs. Halls of Atonement, we have no uh, no nerfs here for the second week in a row. This is dungeon was not getting any changes. I don't think it needed any changes. TBH uh, seems like all the bosses in here are totally fine. And uh, with these affixes, I guess the main thing is that you're gonna have a lot of explosive vectors from the the groundskeepers. Uh, when Echelon spawns the ones that are coming in from afar, watch out for explosives spawning there. 
But uh, it shouldn't really be too bad, given how as long as one person is doing that and notices them, they can just kill him with any ability. So you should be totally fine on that front. Uh, let's move on then to Mist Tierna Scythe. Uh, Mist, also no changes. Yeah, also no changes here uh, for this week. The 10% tyrannical health nerf is going to be extremely relevant here, for particularly for this first boss. Uh, it, it should mean that at the same key level, you might many many groups are going to be able to do one less phase uh, than they used to, and also many groups. The, the way this fight works is that the the longer you're in that phase. Uh, the more of these mechanics you're going to get to, uh, because he has this kind of sequence of casts that he will go through. So uh, if you're fast, if it's a fortified week, for instance, you're often going to be able to skip the repulsive visage entirely. And then at a certain breakpoint, you'll start getting the repulsive visage cast, which is a big A we fear. And then at a certain breakpoint, you'll start getting the embrace darkness, which is going to do uh, a big AoE damage uh, dot thing on everybody, uh, and also reduces damage taken by the 80%. So the more, like the 10% the health reduction from Tyrannical should not only mean that you'll have to do less phases, it should mean that each of those intermission or each of the non-burn phases will be a little bit less punishing. A lot of groups are going to see those mechanics shaved off the end of those phases, should make this boss, which was a, a big pain point in this dungeon, a lot easier. The rest of the dungeon is already pretty favorable, uh, and there's not really too much that goes horribly wrong in here, so uh, all good news on that front. Plaguefall is up next. Plaguefall is one where I'm a little bit surprised to not see any targeted boss nerfs. This is a dungeon where uh, I I think that the every single boss in this dungeon is pretty lethal. <laughs> I've wiped in multiple different ways to each boss here uh, in, in different runs. So there's a lot of there's a lot of different stuff that can go wrong in this place. And uh, I, I, so the 10% tyrannical health nerf is certainly going to help with that, right? You're, you're a little more likely to kill Globgrog before that fourth or fifth or whatever uh, set of ads gets spawned that you can't deal with. Uh, you're a little bit more likely, I guess Dr. Ick is, in, a high, in, in most keys, you're probably just going to be focusing down those oozes that he spawns. Uh, still a little bit of help there. I don't know, mo mostly, I guess they, they did nerf this boss last week as well, so... Uh, that, uh, that, that'll carry over to this week to help make it a little easier. I'd still be on the lookout for this one. On Tyrannical Weeks, I think this is, a, this is one where uh, you really got to focus. Make sure you have your cooldowns for most of the bosses, because uh, all of them have some element of either mechanic check or DPS check, or both, uh, that you're going to need to watch out for. Sanguine Depths, uh, we saw some targeted boss nerfs in this dungeon in previous weeks. This week, we have nothing going on here either. Uh, all the bosses being left as is, which I think is pretty reasonable, especially, again, 10% health. Uh, no, it's, so it's not 10% of their total health, right? It's, they've, they've gone from 140 to 130% health on Tyrannical Weeks. So, quick little calculator moment here. More of a 7.6% 7, 7 health nerf, I guess. Yeah, 7.6% health nerf relative to what they would have been in the previous version of Tyrannical. It's still pretty big, though. It's still, it's still a... A big chunk, right? That's bas it's basically a key level, key levels worth of health. A little bit less than a key levels worth of health taken off these bosses. Um, should help. Should help with, in addition to the other changes the first two bosses have received. Uh, in here, you're also going to want to watch out for rogue explosives spawning on mobs that are far away from you. You know, if you have any of these, uh, these stupid scribes throwing books at you from far away, that in and of itself is a problem. You should try and fix that. Uh, but you really need to watch out for explosives spawning off of those enemies. That can be extremely lethal, so uh, keep an eye out. Keep an eye out for those. Spires of Ascension, this dungeon did receive a single change this week, which is that the Dark Stride bleed from the second boss has gotten nerfed down to 15 from 20 seconds. Still extremely good if you can carry and potion this off, if you can stone form this off. Uh, if you can use any any ability to remove this bleed, extremely powerful uh, immunities and stuff. It still does a lot of damage, but it should be a little bit less costly to leave this on the player. Uh, and notably, the boss is going to die a little bit sooner, so it, it has a little bit less of that kind of brutal marathon vibe to it than it did in previous weeks. Uh, it should be a little bit less of a drain on your healer mana. Still a pretty tricky boss, though. Still, uh, still one to watch out for. Still a good one to have pride going into, if at all possible. Uh, the rest of the dungeon... This one, again, there's also a couple of, of weird explosive vectors you're going to want to watch out for, particularly with this pack. Uh, I actually haven't 
I haven't been in this dungeon in a couple weeks, so I, I, I haven't heard of whether these ether divers have been fixed yet, but last I was in here, they were, they would, two of them would just stay up on there and evade uh, and not come down. So uh, when I was in here last explosive week, those were spawning explosives up there, which was a bit of a problem. So watch out for those. Um, don't know if or when this has been fixed. Let me know. Somebody let me know if that has been fixed, if you do aspires. I've been, uh, I guess, avoiding this key a little bit uh, inadvertently. So uh, let, me, let me know if you've seen that. Uh, let's go on to Necrotic Wake. So this is another dungeon where we do have a change, which is just the last boss, uh, Champion's Boon. This is a 100% crit buff that you got from doing the Dark Exile successfully. And this has been buffed by double, double, double duration here. Pretty nice. Uh, should make it feel a little bit less bad to be targeted there. My suspicion is people are still not going to like it when they're targeted, but I actually think mm, this is kind of getting in range where you might, you maybe you're actually rooting for yourself to get targeted. Especially the main the main feel bad is if you pop your cooldowns, then immediately get targeted. So try and keep aware of when that dark exile cast is coming, and if you're not somebody who can uh, vanish, feign, meld it, or whatever when targeted, ice block. Uh, then try and hold your cooldown such that if you do get targeted, you'll have them to combine with your crit buff rather than having them expire while you're being exiled. That is a, that's not a good feeling. Uh, rest of the dungeon. This is also one where, where rogue explosives need to be watched out for, spawning on the adds, any adds that are far away uh, on Amarth. Any of the, oftentimes this first room gets pulled in a somewhat chaotic manner with mobs kind of coming in from far away. Particularly some of these mobs are casters, like to hang out pretty far away. Uh, and A of all, you should be looking at them because they have nasty interrupts you need to get, but also, of course, watch out for the explosives uh, and watch out for any... If you're, do, if you're trying to do anything massive in here, gotta watch out for the bursting as well. And then finally, Theater of Pain. This dungeon, we've got a health reduction on Zav the Unfallen. I think this is a great target for health reduction. So in addition to the tyrannical health reduction, Zav itself, himself is just getting 10% uh, getting off of his health, and that is... I think brilliant. I think this is a really good target for that because this is a boss fight that again went got longer and longer. The more the more time you added to this boss, the more health it gets as well because it spawns these uh, banners that most groups choose to kill those banners. Although in the MDI recently we saw Echo, uh, I think just just tunnel boss and ignore ignore all banners, which is maybe something you can do with the right team comps at any key level because there's if you can ignore one, you can ignore them all. Um, it's pretty sketch though, so I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much that's a strategy that that can be adapted for for live keys, but it's definitely something to look into. Either way, though, most groups are just going to kill the banner. I recommend just killing the banner unless the boss is like uh, lower health or close to the same health as the banner. Uh, and because of that, that meant that as the boss fight goes longer, you get more and more banners. Particularly as you your DPS falls down, the boss gets even longer than it normally would, right? Because uh, you then getting extra banners in there as well. So really nice that they have targeted this one specifically to get a little bit less health. I think this was, you know, if, if you told me that one single boss was getting this 10% reduction, uh, I would have, well, first of all, I would have said Hakar. Second of all, I would have said Zav, probably. Uh, I think a, a good choice for this this kind of nerf. Uh, the rest of the dungeon untouched. That's the that's the end of the, the changes that we've seen this week. And uh, theater, beyond that, there are again a couple of there are a couple mobs that like to like to stand pretty far away. A couple of archers in this wing, uh, a couple of mobs here that kind of leap around, try and stay nice and tightly grouped so that they leap in a nice tight space um, for explosive management. But again, explosive management is a lot less of a thing this expansion than it was in previous expansions because you didn't really need you don't really need them to be spawning in the group. Your healer can just tag them with a global wherever they spawn, uh, or just heal the group if they if they fail to do that and. Uh, but mostly just kill them. Mostly kill them. They still do a lot of damage. It's much better to invest one global into killing them than like 10 globals into healing the group or a bunch of defensives uh, and stuff. So you do want to try and kill them, but it's really not the end of the world if they're spawning far away. Just look out for them. Be Always be aware when you're in a pool where there is something like an archer that you either need to get it into the pool or you need to keep it in your range of view the whole time and be ready for those explosives to kill. Uh, anyways, a really, really good dungeon for bursting. There's only a couple of spots where you're killing more than like three or four enemies at the same time. Uh, so uh, that's that's really nice for keeping those stacks low. Uh, and yeah, that's it. That's theater. That's the dungeons. Um, hope you like this video. Hope you enjoy my my take on the, the new balance changes. I hope this is going to be a thing. I hope that these kind of weekly tuning changes, we've seen like every couple weeks they do class balancing and then 
every week for the past three weeks, but even before then, they, they've done some of these M plus changes, they've been doing PvP balance changes, these kind of frequent small tuning. I see a lot of complaints that not everything is fixed and that like there are still problems in the game, but I, I feel like that's a pretty pretty weak argument. I think that the uh, the level of the direction that each of these changes has been has been positive, the frequency of them has been positive, and I'd much rather see you know, a 5% improvement every week than wait 10 weeks for a 50% improvement, right? Because you're going to get to the same place uh, eventually either way, and this way we're at least seeing that there is that kind of constant move. And again, I think that every single change in today's set of changes has been a good one. Uh, I think that r there's really nothing that I can look at here and be like, this was unnecessary, this was a wrong thing to target. All of these were either some some changes that would have been like, if I, if I could have written down five changes I would have made 10+, plus. Maybe not these specific changes, but like changes addressed at these specific things, particularly on the other side, would have been exactly on my list. This one would have been very high up there. Um, and I don't really see any of these that are like, they're missing the point, right? Sometimes they have these uh, class balancing changes that come out and you're like, okay, they've maybe identified part of the problem, but they're solving it in, a, in the wrong way or something. I don't see that in any of that here. I see all of this as making each of these fights better. I saw the changes aimed at tanks as, you know, again, maybe not being everything I wanted, but being all stuff that was going in the right direction. So um, hopefully they continue to do this. Does reward me a little bit for my last minute recordings of these uh, of these episodes. Uh, I got to make sure that I keep doing that, I guess. Can't, sometimes when I'm, you know, when I'm on top of things, I'm recording stuff a couple days in advance, but that would actually be a bad thing if I was doing that with this series, because uh, <laughs> then they'd come out with these changes uh, between when I recorded it and when it came out that would be bad, so. Um, this is an argument for procrastination kids. If you're watching this, you're in school or whatever. Always last minute, those uh, those homeworks and those essays and stuff. You never know what patch notes are going to come out between when you write it and when it's due, so just do it as late as possible. That's my life advice for everybody. Anyways, hope this video helped. Check out my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash ratnos. Remember to hit like and subscribe and stuff. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.